Hi everybody. While I'm trying to get everything in focus as best I can, let me explain what this series is all about. I'm Bruce, the wee one you see here. It's getting close to 70 years later, so I thought I should do my best to preserve what you are about to see. For Christmas 1936, Santa gave my mum an 8mm movie camera. What I remember best growing up was on special occasions such as after Christmas dinner, out would come the card table, a projector set up, and we would watch our home movies. No sound, of course, only our comments, and laughter when we decided to put things in reverse. In the 1960s, I got Dad to write down what he remembered, and I'm using his notes for the most part. You may be somewhat confused by the terms. For example, Grandma. Whose grandma are we talking about? For the most part, I'm talking from my perspective. Pennies from heaven. In the middle of the block between 6th Avenue and 6th A, there was a skating rink. The stone apartment block on 6th Avenue you may recognize. You'll find your heart in fallen all over town. Be sure that your umbrella is upside down. In those days, you want a skating rink, you just get out the hose and make one. This was behind Cleveland's house at 1206 6th Avenue. It shows Betty, Kathleen Myers, Harriet Lynn, and Peggy Cleveland, with a glimpse of Charlie Cleveland, the father, and then Brian also appears. Oh, when you hear it thunder, don't run under a tree. There'll be pennies from heaven for you. And me. Mm -hmm. Spring 1937 has finally arrived at our home which Dad had bought in 1929. It was at 1213 6th Avenue A South. Grandma Haig had an appointment uh, at Galt Manor. Russell, uh, Dad's brother, and wife Jessie, who were still living in Claire's home, they would later buy the home. The car, a Ford Coupe, was a birthday gift for Mum, April 25th, 1937. Finally, Bruce is rescued by our maid, Lillian Martin. Will you try to give... Pa is about to drive off in our Oldsmobile 8, a car he had picked up at the factory in Oshawa in the summer of 1935 on his return from Europe. He then drove the family through the U.S., Phyllis, Betty Ellen, Brian, and Grandma Haig. I hadn't yet arrived. Pa says that Brian's little friend is Tom Robertson's boy and nephew of Kate Turner. And with you, moments before. Guess who? Dad says that Lillian Martin is crouched behind me and trying to hide from the camera. Can you find her? In love, small. Notice the section behind Brian where the skating rink was. Looks like it's starting to get built up. If love still can remember, the spark may burn again. I know that I be contented with yesterday's memory 
knowing you think of me. Once in a while. In these next scenes, Russell's kids, Mary and Peggy, have been added to the mix. That's Betty at the front, Peggy, and Mary holding up the rear. Sheila Lynn and Brian. By the way, the music selections that are used in this production are pieces that were on the hit parade during the years that we're referring to. It's spring 1937 and time for the Sunday school picnic. The Dominion Government Experimental Farm was often the scene of such huge gatherings. Lois Brownrigg, Betty Ellen, and Brian have decided to go and check out the place. Children sitting around in a circle having their lunch. We see Billy Stoltz walk through the center of the ring. There's Miss McGiven. Mrs. Pritchard's sister, briefly, then Reverend Pritchard, with a pitcher in his hand, eating a sandwich. Brian can be well spotted in the circle, eating his lunch. And when you caught my eye, my heart... Can't find Reverend Pritchard? There he is. And I knew the spark of love was still burning. There'll be no new romance for me It's foolish to start For that old feeling Is still in my heart After supper, as I recall, we would often go for a drive to Henderson Lake. What's this? 
I was always told no swimming at Henderson Lake. Here's what our place looked like before they built the house. That's roses in the background, probably Dr. Rose tending his garden. Has made her baby oh so blue. You left me in the lurch. You left me waiting at the church. Boo-hoo. That's why I'm crying for you. Enter Brian's friend John and Ann Patterson. Note the driveway post used to open the garage door. The destination was the famous Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, for a refresher course. On his way in the Chicago area, he checked out some flat-roofed houses similar to his own. Dad was a great one for visiting relatives. And if she doesn't bring it back, I think that I will die. I'll let you figure it out. Cousin Grace and her husband Ralph. A tisket, a tisket. In front of my cousin Hilda's house in Chicago, there was Uncle Harry in a group shot with cousin Lorna and her husband Larry, along with cousin Hilda and Uncle Harry. In Guelph, Dad visited the home of his Aunt Bella and Uncle Dan. Returning through Niagara Falls after picking up a new 1938 Buick in Oshawa, bad weather hampered is getting a good shot of the falls. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Just a little yellow basket. Dr. 
Alex Simpson, a former Claire's homeboy and medical classmate, gets out of Dad's new Buick in front of his Cleveland home. Right in and drove the shadows away. Love. The Mayo Clinic in Rochester, as it was in 1938. On my sunniest day, one magic moment. Love said hello. Though not. Betty's eighth birthday party, September 12th, 1938, included Heather Meston, Phyllis Felger, Harriet and Sheila Lynn, Peggy Cleveland, Kay Myers, Peggy Haig, Beverly Nicholson, Judith Marshall, Lillian Scott, and Betty Ellen. So says Dad, but I'm sure there were others. Hey, what about me? One look and I had found a world completely new when love walked in. Yeah, lock me in a playpen. One look and I had found a world completely new when love walked in. The fall of 38 brought snow, and boy did we enjoy it. When you were only starting to go to kindergarten, I bet you drove those other childs wild. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, when it came to winning Blue Ribbon. Well, I bet you taught the other kids how. Well, I can see the judges' eyes as they handed you the prize. I bet you took the cutest bow. Yeah, you must have been a beautiful at you now. Come on, do I like you? My second home was at the Tufts. In my early years, to Constance and Herbert, living two doors north, I was the child they never had. They loved to read me stories and take me on walks. While we walked, Dad was enjoying his new Buick. Over the years, as you can expect, that post took a beating. It was replaced as cars got bigger and fully automatic openers came on the scene. I know you made the cutest bar. Yeah, you must have been a beautiful Beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Grandma and Grandpa Ford visited us Christmas 1938. 
Take a look in the five and ten, glistening once again with candy canes and silver lanes aglow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Boxing Day was spent at Patterson's on 11th Street, just kibitzing around. But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. A pair of hop-along boots and a pistol that shoots is the wish of Barney and Ben. And all that will talk and will go for a walk is the hope of Janice and Jen. And Mom and Dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere. There's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well. The sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bell. Have yourself a merry little Christmas Let your heart be light Next year all our troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay Next year all our troubles will be miles away If the fates allow Until then we'll have to muddle through somehow So have yourself a merry little Christmas now Mom always got a kick out of this scene. Dad busy instructing her on how to take pictures when she was already doing it. Grandma Higgs, 75th birthday. Dad said that in addition to those people we should already know, there was Douglas Haig, Leonce Clark, Ward and Dorothy Clark, May and Charlie Strangway, from Claire's home. Willard and May were in Europe at the time. Land that I heard of once in a lullaby Somewhere over the rain Skies are blue And the dreams that you dare to dream Really do come true Someday I'll wish upon a star And wake up where the clouds are far behind me Where troubles melt like lemon drops Away above the chimney tops that's where you find me Somewhere over the rainbow Bluebirds fly Birds fly over the rainbow Why then, oh why can't I
Later in February, before leaving for home, Grandma and Grandpa Ford had one more movie call. the family went to Calgary to see King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. In the picture we see Sergeant Causey who is our neighbor. into the Buick and headed downtown to the McFarland building where dad had his office on the top floor. Here we would have a good view of the parade. Note the corner building with the large awning. This was the Lafferty block where Pa had an upstairs office when he first came to Lethbridge in 1928. Sidney Jackson's drugstore eventually became Draffin's.
You know, when I was a kid, this milk bottle was a city landmark sitting out on the edge of the coulee. I always thought it was bigger than what I see here. Nishi Buck, who lived in Portland, came and spent a few days with us at our seaside cottage. Traveling with Frank Calder, they visited Chicago, Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, Guelph, and Windsor, Detroit, where, of course, Dad picked up a new car, this time a Ford. This is the Ottawa airport with Grandma and Grandpa Ford and Aunt Ruth and Frank Calder. And we still on the As the year closes, here's Bruce coming home from visiting the Tufts. And we still wave on the little dream and settle high on the crest of a thrill. Dad had a visit from his Uncle Harry, who was a grocer in Chicago. A train trip with Nan Patterson, a visit with Aunt Marion, Mum's half sister. A visit with her other half sister, Aunt Ruth. For tears would fill. This is the home of Mum's sister, Jean, and her husband, Charlie Martin, in New York. Charlie took them to LaGuardia Airport to watch the planes come in and go out. I'll never love again. When you wish upon a star. Aunt Jean and Uncle Charlie on the left, and friend. Anything your heart desires will come to you. If your heart is in your dream, no request. Jean and Charlie in New York must have had lots of friends. 
I believe he had a Cadillac car franchise of some sort. Ah, slow down that camera! Fate is kind She brings to those who love The sweet fulfillment of Their secret longing Like a bolt Back in Montreal, we see Aunt Louise on the left with friend. It comes in view when you and at work at the Royal Victoria Hospital. Your dreams come true when a star is born. They possess a gift or two. One of them is this: they have the power. To make a wish come true. Cross's cottage. Mum's folks had had a cottage at Farm Point when she was a child. This young man is Miller Joint, who was Aunt Ruth's first husband. He had joined the RCAF and became an air gunner, was lost over Cologne early in the war. Dad was a proud kinsman, and in 1940, they brought the races and related events to the city. This was the parade that started it all rolling. We three, we're all alone, living in a memory. My echo, my shadow, and me. We three, we're not a crowd. We're not even company. My a few years back, I appear to have inherited another piece of film from a fellow a kinsman member at the time, and in it I found this segment which appears to be the 1940 Tin Lizzy Derby. Moonlight, the silvery moonlight that shines above. I walk with my shadow, I talk with my echo, but where is the one I love? We will wait for you even till eternity my echo my shadow and me we three we're all alone Seem like we're living in a memory. That's my echo, my shadow, and me. At this point, some Boy Scouts appear to be getting ready to burn someone in effigy. Possibly it was Adolf Hitler. Fact is, we ain't even company. That's my echo, my shadow, and me. You know, I've been wondering 
What good is the moonlight? That silvery moonlight that shines we This is just a warm up. Soon they'll be placing people behind the ramp. Shadow. I talk with my echo. But where is that gal that I love? We three will wait for you. Even till it This spearing balloons looks like it could be a little dangerous. It's all fun and games until someone pokes an eye out. In 1940, Brian and Bruce show up at Calder's on 15th Street in our new Air Force suits, and were we proud. <music> Looks like our dog pal needed a little repair work here. This is Miss Ashmore. She worked at St. Mike's and sometimes would stay with us when Mum and Dad were off on their trips. In August of 1940, after attending the National Convention of the Kinsmen Clubs of Canada in Edmonton, Mum and Dad, along with friends Frank and Verna Calder, Harvey and Marge Greenway, and Eddie and Jean Cairns, motored to Jasper Park.
Where have you been, Dad? Just asking. Extreme Sports, 1940 style. Meanwhile, later in the season, Air Marshal uh, Bruce seems to be enjoying his wagon. And here comes Betty. I bet she's been to her music lesson with Miss Sanquist. Notice, no sidewalk, no lawns, no hard surfaced roads. Dad's mom and grandma lived across the street in the duplex. Do I see my little red wagon there? Looks like they're raking the leaves. Darn your lips and darn your They must have had lots of fun as they entertained in the game room. They had funny money printed and each guest was given money to play various games and looked like a lot of fun. Russell and Jesse, Isabel Gibson, Willard and May Haig, Bill and Wynne Myers, Eddie and Jean Karens, Kay Karens, Bert and Edith Niven, Harvey and Jesse Schweitzer, Len and Cookie Scott, Ed and Andy Niven, George and Helen Draffen, Del, Alita, Del and Alita Anderson, Doug and Peg Robinson, Andy and Rita Anderson, Gladys and Ed Allen, Vernon Lowell Northfield, Marge and Harvey Greenway, Jean and Bob Glover. Can you pick them out?
look, we're all dressed up. I may be wrong because it looks a little too green, but every Easter, didn't matter whether it was warm or cold, that was the first day we could wear our good clothes to go off to Sunday school. Could be it. Spring 41, and there I go off to see Grandma across the street. Notice they're uh, putting um, the hard surfaced roads, it looks like, soon, because there's the sidewalks and curbs going in. My wagon, my favorite toy. Forty-one, we went to Banff and stayed at uh, Becker's cabins. Betty Gibson, Verna Calder, Peggy Haig, and some Air Force fellows that were in training at the bombing and gunnery schools in the area. Back at the cabin, Don Calder seems to be eyeing Bruce and wondering what all the shaking's about. Time for a swim in the famous cave and basin. Here's Russell and his family, the Calders, Phyllis and Pa. Montreal they met Mike and Pat Prouse. Uh, Mike and Pa were taking Dr. Fitzgerald's course in surgery in preparation for the Royal College exams in the fall of 41. Oh, they say. La da 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 La da 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 She had a man who's tall, dark, handsome, large and strong To whom she used to sing this song chalet atop Mount Royal, they and many others had a great view of the city. Inspiration, Daddy. I want a brand new car, champagne caviar. Daddy, you want to get the best for me? In Ottawa, they went on to visit um, Phyllis's grandfather, George Lowe, who was celebrating his 100th birthday. He had been born on October 9th, 1841. He lasted a few more years. He was over 102 when he died. Everything, Daddy, you want to get the best for me, Lea, Lea. Hey, Daddy, gee. Boy, I look swell in sables, clothes with Paris labels. Daddy, you want to get the best for me? La, da, 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 da. I wasn't there, but reading from 
pause notes, Ruth and Marion with Barbara, who is approximately one year of age. This was taken in front of Phyllis's home in Ottawa. Daddy, I want a brand new car. Champagne, caviar. Daddy, Daddy, you want to get the best. That's all, folks.